this self-surrender and this self-inquiry in the way is the same. The one is through understanding, the other is through giving myself constantly to the whole. Whatever I'm giving, I'm letting go of is allowing me to live as that which I can understand what I am. In other words, and this is sometimes a bit tough to swallow, to digest, but the truth is, in the same way, like nothing can stop us from surrendering, because it's our nature. In the same way, nothing can stop us from being happy, because it's our nature. So, when suffering comes to visit, possibly again, we have to be very, very cautious if it's coming from a sunstorm or from satsang or from some children playing outside making noise during the satsang or a funny smell or... The tendency in the mind to make this cause-effect game, which is only happening in the mind, only in creation. Karma, traditionally called, is just happening in the phenomena in the mind. The reality is that I am Causeless joy, causeless happiness, causeless love. So if I am this causeless joy, how could I give something outside of me, so to speak, the power to make me suffer? This doesn't make sense. But the mind will try to convince me over and over again, I'm suffering because. Because of you, because of that, because of la la la. I am free, I am pure consciousness, but if you say that, then, then I'm not pure consciousness anymore. Then I'm suddenly a person affected by you. Or I am suddenly not only affected by the sunstorm in some way or other in my system, depending how it's reacting to it, but my suffering is coming from the sunstorm. It's such a nuance to be an open, sensitive, transparent, more and more transparent human being as consciousness and, and feeling everything as one. And we, it's very easy to do that when we are enjoying good sensations, nice sensations. But somehow when things get difficult, and I, I'm speaking very well from experience, Just, I don't know, a few years ago, five, six years ago, I came back to Rishikesh and, and we were in Tapovan, one part of Rishikesh, because I was invited there to, to help Atmananda in his satsang series. And the only place that was bearable to my system was the ashram. Everything around felt like hell to my avatar. It was so challenging. 
and my mind was very hard trying to convince me and at that time did convince me i won't pretend that the outer circumstances are kind of responsible for my happiness And it is true that the energy in, in this district of Rikshikesh is a mess. There are all these false yogis and all this, you read all these stories, the fake gurus and the, and the yogas and the abuses here and the get enlightened in one weekend courses and it's all happening there. So that's how it feels. It's true. It's it doesn't feel great, but does it does it have the power to make me suffer? I can walk away in intelligence, or I can decide in freedom to stay because I'm promised to help in the satsang with Atmananda. In no way. Can this causeless being, our true nature, be truly affected? And if we do still feel affected personally through those phenomena, then we are still identifying to some degree with the body mind as my reality as myself we are feeding the belief to be this body mind exclusively if we give the power of my happiness, of my joy, of my freedom, of my love to objects, to circumstances, to phenomena. Earlier or later, as tough it may sound sometimes, and In a way, we all have to, to go through those lessons, and I certainly did go through those lessons, and, and, and surely I'm still awaiting more of challenges and lessons to come. Earlier or later, we have to take full, full, full responsibility for our happiness. The teachings are clear. And if it's not my experience, that I do not suffer in certain circumstances, then there must be traces of personal identity in me. beliefs and feelings that convince me to be a separate person. And it's exactly those beliefs and feelings and sometimes even perceptions that come up out of those 
old out of this old habit that need to be surrendered. In this understanding that surrender is my nature, or in love, which full devotion, this path of bhakti, this path of devotion and love, is I'm so devoted to. It can be my partner or my, my mother or my child or a teacher. It doesn't matter. If I'm fully devoted, if I'm totally giving myself to love, there's no separate self in that moment. So I'm giving in the same way myself as a separate self, those phenomena, to love, back to love, back to understanding back to consciousness. If it's through understanding that this is not me, that those phenomena are just objects appearing in me, or if it's through love where those objects have no power anymore over me, it's the same thing in the end. What is important is that somehow I stop believing, stop giving the power to the objects to make me suffer. 